What's up guys, welcome to another video, this time from London, actually uh, in my apartment in London. Have we done an apartment tour? I don't think we've done an apartment tour on mm. the English channel. No, 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 we haven't. No, so we'll, we'll do that for you soon. Today, however, we are going to be filming a little bit of insight, well at least what I know in terms of what's happening with the car market now and investment and what you need to look for to invest in, in certain cars. A lot of you will know a lot of this. Well, I know I am not at all a guru who knows everything by no means. Just thought I would share with you what has been relayed to me over the last uh, couple of months um, in terms of buying a car that will not lose its value too much and potentially even gain in its value. That's gonna be the topic of today. The reason I thought I would do a video of this topic was mainly just because there were a lot of comments. What? Maybe just because you need the cash. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> the reason I thought I would do <laughs> because, by the way, English Channel ain't earning no cash. <laughs> <laughs> True. The reason I thought I'd do this video once and for all was because we put a video out on the new car that I've just bought, and there were a bunch of comments on both my English and my French channel. Um, asking about the car and curious about why I'd pick that car and um, curious on whether it would go up in value and things like that. I hope so. But as always, you never know in this market. You never really know what's going to happen with your car, if the market's just going to completely shit itself or if it's going to go skyrocketing. You never really know. So no investment is a sure investment in the car world, I think. There's always a certain amount of risk. But there are certain things, certain boxes you can tick. Again, I'm not trying to stand here as like a teacher, a know-it-all. What I'm saying right now may not be the case in a couple of weeks, but it's just me, you know, telling you what I believe to be true at this stage. There are certain boxes you can tick which will help you get your chances higher for it to be a decent investment car, let's say. And basically people want what they can't have effectively and things that we used to have which were amazing. So the two big boxes to tick really are naturally aspirated because a lot of cars are turbocharged now. Why are cars turbocharged now? Because it's better um, for the emissions. So naturally aspirated is a big one. And manual. So the manual gearbox for petrol heads is the most sort of engaging and uh, visceral driving experience. <sighs> Three pedals, you have full control over the, the car and which gear it's in. There is no way that it will change gear without you putting your input into it. <laughs> Those two things make a car very visceral. Now, naturally aspirated cars are visceral purely because of the fact that um, they don't have a turbo sucking out a lot of the noise and a lot of the feel. So, now I drove an F430 recently and that was just insane. I know it's not manual. I was in a manual one not too long ago either, but the way the imperfections made the car so perfect, everything was shaking. You'd switch the car on, you had this bellowing V8 making noise and you had the, the, the steering wheel, that's the word I was looking for, were shaking and uh, everything was shaking around the car and, and you felt like bits were gonna fall off, maybe, but that's what maybe, made it amazing. Like vibrating thing. If it was yeah. shaking, I'd be really worried. Yeah, vibrating. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is you felt so connected to the car. It was so, I know I keep using the word, but visceral, genuinely. So those are two big things. I mean, like an example of a car that has both of those boxes ticked would be like the 599 GTB. Years and years ago, I uh, t told my father, I was like, look, there's this 599 GTB Furano with a manual gearbox for sale. I think I've heard there were only 31 in the world. Anyway, so I, I went to him and at the time I was disillusional and thought maybe he'd be able to afford the car. It was 95,000 euros and he was like, look, I would, I would love that, but there would, we'd need to sell so many things in order to be able to get that. So, you know, didn't do it, it's too risky, we don't really have the money to put that into an investment right now, etc, etc. Completely understandable. This is going to make you feel like, oh no, I think a year and a half ago, that car, not like a similar car, that exact car sold for $750,000 at auction. Un and that's untaxable profit on a car. Whew. 
so yes that was uh that was very frustrating and so that's an example of a manual car again manual f430s manual lamborghini gallardos uh manual lp640s uh, manual lp670 mercialagas are over a million pounds now so a lot of these naturally aspirated manual cars are going up in value and you can see models like the 599 like the mercialago like the f430 um, or even the California which was actually the last V8 Ferrari with a manual uh, you can see those models be worth a lot more than the double or single clutch um, uh, you know, other versions that were released of that exact model so that shows how people are really edging towards the manual and it tells us why that would be and it's because it's so much more rare now to get a manual because the vast majority of people would rather have a double clutch because in traffic it's uh, so much more convenient and you can choose to change gear if you want to but it's not quite the same is it so a lot of manufacturers are not offering that anymore some are coming back to offering it a bit more like porsche you can still get manual on a lot of models with porsche but in general ferrari don't make manuals anymore lamborghini don't make manuals anymore maserati don't make manuals anymore so a lot of the big brands are not making them anymore which makes them a rare commodity simple demand and supply supply has gone up because people have realized how much more rare they are and demand is blocked it's not going to go up anymore you said supply went up it's gone down oh sorry <laughs> is that what i said yeah what i meant to say is supply has gone down down supply goes uh down well i mean remains the same basically but demand is constantly going up because people want those cars more similarly for nationally aspirated engines which are very rare now I and mean, you've got Lamborghini that are making them. Ferrari are still just about making the V8 and the eight, uh, V12 and the A12. So yes, so those are certain things. Other things are limited. So that there are limited numbers, whether that be manufacturer limited. So um, a F12 TDF, you know, we're going to make 699 of those. That's manufacturer limited. Whereas 599 GTB, for example, was not manufacturer limited. It was just limited because no one bloody ordered them. So there were only 31, um, 31 of those. And what was so funny about that? No one bloody ordered them. <laughs> All right, chill out. <laughs> but it's true. They, didn't, they never said we'll only make a certain amount. And that brings us actually swiftly onto the Audi R8 V10 Plus manual. Naturally aspirated V10 and only seven in the UK very few europe wide again not because they were limited but because it was only available with the double clutch and you had to go to audi and ask them to give you a special order manual gearbox to get it no one really did that so now it's incredibly rare so very limited uh, which which helps a lot so that's awesome i'm very happy about that and i didn't think i'd be able to get one but in the end we managed to if you didn't see the last video with the whole story of how that ended up happening bit of a miracle i think to be honest that we ended up getting that car so I feel very fortunate and uh, you know that's a good example v10 manual naturally aspirated you know you've got as i said in the last video you've got the porsche Crow gt as well that is under that formula that's gone up in value You've got the Gallardo manuals gone up in value and you've got the Dodge Vipers. So the Dodge Vipers tend to go up in value and, you know, like ACRs and stuff are going up in value massively. But I think that maybe those will go skyrocketing in not too long because manual V10, very rare. And I did forget in the last video and someone commented, so thank you very much for commenting that, the F10 M5 in manual is another manual v10 so uh and i actually to be perfectly honest with you i don't know what they're doing value wise um so yes those would be the two main things obviously now next and a bit to, to the title of this video why do i think this is a good time to buy a car so another thing you need to tick off i, I was just saying is is exclusivity so manufacturer limited or just genuinely limited for gts i've heard they're making more of is that limited have they given a number um i don't think so not to my knowledge yet or at least not of like the non-heritage cars and things like that so that's not manufacturing limited it's just very hard to get your hands on and that is enough for certain cars that have heritage have history etc to go up in value like the ford gt because that's turbocharged and double clutch yet they're selling for double what they're worth right now or what they're worth what they were you know sold for list price so yeah limited numbers and heritage 
can also be enough sack the you know manual gearbox and the naturally aspirated to make the car go up in value so obviously the the massive story behind the ford gt um so yeah and limited numbers you know when the senna first came out those were selling for a lot more even though those are turbocharged and double clutch so yeah it depends but i don't see those holding for as long necessarily so like the senna's come right back down um is actually selling for under list price now so yeah i think the safest bet if you can find a limited number car with a manual gearbox and a naturally aspirated engine now the one thing the car i've bought the audi r8 is missing is pedigree to a certain extent um so you know it's not a, a remake of a of a very well-known car it doesn't have any racing pedigree really i mean it's one you know the gt3 and lms uh, all of that stuff but you know it's, it's missing that a little bit it's not like a Caro gt for example i hope what i'm saying makes sense and uh, you guys are following and again i don't mean this and i know i keep saying it but i really don't mean it in an arrogant i know everything kind of way um this is just from being around a lot of people in the car world what i've learned from them i thought i'd relay it to you now the reason this could be a good time to sell is because of the uncertainties that there have been politically in the uk sorry bye yes i keep looking at you <laughs> you i keep switching things around don't i why this could be a good time to buy would be because of the political situations that have been happening in the UK. So Brexit, no one really knows what the hell's going on, do we? It's brought the market down. So cars are, uh, you know, have gone down in general and are cheaper right now. Now then, this could go two ways. Cars, you know, we could be coming to the end of this bubble where the prices were, you know, going crazy. So they could keep going down and maybe now you would buy, um, you know, and it, w it would keep going down, but I feel like it's gone down enough that it could be a good time to buy now. And I don't really see a lot of these cars going down anymore. And so they will then come back up out of the back of that. So a simple dip in the market, um, which will fix itself after something solidified has happened with Brexit. And then the market will sort of get back on its feet. So a lot of people say that, that you know, that's not the case, it may not be. Um, that there's going to be a crisis because of the financial situation in Italy, which is going to mean that other people are going to have to bail them out, which then means that there will be a second crisis and the car market's going to shit itself. I believe, I think, I hope, and I, it's what I've done, is I've bought a car now, thinking hopefully it will go up a little bit. So that's maybe, that maybe explains the title a little, little bit more. And another reason why I think, obviously now is a good time to buy it, because all of the things I listed before, manual, naturally aspirated, etc., um, we're just in the in the period now where it's not long enough ago that those were normal That was the way cars were made that they're not like crazy expensive But in 20 years or something when there really won't be any more and there will be a lot more people Able to buy those sorts of cars financially able that's when I think they'll skyrocket So that's why I think now before it's too late could be a good time to pick up those rare cars uh, and dying breed so i think that pretty much covers it all what do you think Cole? Mm. yeah 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 <laughs> yeah i mean i hope i haven't messed anything up there oh you did yeah okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite a lot yeah okay he's the bad to fly. Oh, we're good we're good you, yeah, we, we, we as in it. the general picture yeah. and um again it is genuinely just me answering the questions from the comments because i want to try and make it more um, interactive where you guys comment stuff and we just make videos basically on whatever you guys want to see so um, yeah so because there were questions on that hence this video thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it uh, please subscribe the car update oh excuse me god how rude an update on the car should be arriving soon the so basically the owner of the car is not in the UK right now uh, where well, as soon as he's back, that's when we're going to do the collect collection because obviously you pay your commission to the auction house and then later on you um, just deal with the owner one-on-one. -on -one. So that's what's happening now. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll be back with more updates very soon. We're back in London. It looks like it's going to be a nice day. So that's all brilliant stuff. Cheers, guys. And uh, please remember to subscribe if you're not already. Bye-bye.